Hey everybody and welcome to this weekly update. What I'm going to be doing is covering off some of the news within the Microsoft world and also talking about my week. So let's dive in. Hey everybody, welcome to this weekly update. We're on weekly update 82 and my name is Sarah Lean. So this week there is not a lot of news, I'll be honest, there is not a lot of news in terms of the Azure world. We've just saw the teams all ignite their product releases and features at Microsoft Ignite and I'm guessing they're all taking a bit of a breather after working um, quite hard to get all of those announcements ready for that event. I think that's typical, we tend to see as Ignite comes up or even when we see build coming up that the announcements kind of run dry and there's not a lot of chat from the product teams and then we obviously get that big flurry of announcements at Ignite or Build and then it goes quiet for a few weeks while the teams collect themselves and get their diaries back in order from the flurry of activity that Ignite or Build usually causes. I do want to talk about some of the things that we've seen released um, in terms of um, this week though. There's been some announcements around Azure VMware solution extending into other regions. So they've now hit that 10 region availability um, and the new region that they now support um, Azure VMware solution is the Southeast Asia um, region. So that's an important one for a lot of customers that AVS solution or Azure uh, VMware solution went publicly available, generally available at Ignite 2020. And the team have, I think when they brought it out, there was four regions that it had that solution. So you could use AVS in four of the regions in Azure. And slowly the team have been extending that out. And, and this week they've hit that 10 region availability. So there's 10 different regions within the Azure world where you can get Azure VMware solution. I can't remember all of the regions, but definitely have a look at the blog post and see where the availability is because it could be that it's already in your region now or has been recently added. I also had fun this week um, using one of the new features that they talked about at Ignite in terms of Microsoft Teams. So we have saw some announcements around how Teams is going to handle PowerPoint presentations and be that virtual kind of conference centre that we've all been using it for over the last few months or even year. And that the one of the features that I used this week was the kind of what they're calling PowerPoint Live mode. And that's the ability to have a much more interactive experience as a speaker and also as an audience member with whoever is presenting. So my side of Teams was much more interactive than I've seen it. And when I shared my slides, I was able to see the notes. I had much more flexibility about how to interact with the PowerPoint presentation. And I also got um, the availability of the chat. So the layout of my screen was very different than what it previously has been. I didn't have the chat window open. I just had my slides, the, the slide sharing screen open. And I saw at the top of Teams starting to come in little chat messages from the people on the call. Um, and that alerted me to the fact that some people were actually having some issues with the slides. It wasn't, wasn't my end that was actually having issues. It was their end. So once they dropped out of the meeting and came back in, they could see the slides. But again, that alerted me to the fact that there was something there. Um, and it flashed up for a few seconds on the screen in a, in a very undistracting way, um, it was prominent that the messages were there, but it wasn't distracting from my presentation. Um, previously, all you've maybe had is that little red dot on the chat window if you haven't had that open to say that there was something there. Um, and that means that if you haven't opened that in preparation, um, before you start presenting, you have to then go, oh, there's a chat message, you click on it, and then you see and you try to read it. So it can be quite distracting, that method. I do like this new um, ability where the messages are kind of popping up in the screen. So hopefully, I think that's rolling out this month um, to everybody, but it definitely looks exciting, especially given we are all presenting remotely now and a lot of meetings, a lot of conferences, a lot of user groups are all happening within Microsoft Teams. So looking forward to that all rolling out and, and seeing what this new presenter mode is as well is rolling out because it looks like there's going to be the ability for the presenter to kind of control where their, their, their box, their camera, their webcam appears on the screen. Um, a bit like, uh, it looks almost like green screen technology that we see a lot of people use in terms of OBS where they're recording themselves um, with a green screen background, they use OBS 
to remove their background and take away that green screen and then they just superimpose themselves over the top of their slides or the demo screen so that the, the audience can see the slides and also the person talking. Um, and it looks like Teams is going to have some kind of capability around that. It hasn't been rolled out internally or if it has been, I haven't figured out how to use it, but I'm super excited to see where that's going because again, we're doing a lot of presentations within Teams. So being able to kind of play around with the layout and suit our audience is going to be great functionality. Now for me this week, it has been a real refocusing week. I had some time off after Ignite. So I logged off on Friday once Ignite finished and I didn't log back into work until Tuesday. So I had a really nice time off um, just trying to focus on some of the things that I needed to do around the house, catching up with some friends, socially distance, of course, um, and I also did some cooking. But what it gave me was the time to reflect on where I was um, in the year because we're now into March. So we're well on the way to the end of Microsoft's financial year. So FY21 and where I want to be in terms of my target, my to do list, what I'm doing what my focus is going to be for the next couple of months before we end this FY. And it really was a chance to, to understand where my priorities wanted to lie. Um, and one of the first things that I did when I came back on Tuesday was say no to an opportunity um, because I have to focus on some of the things that I have right now, making sure that I am producing quality results to the things currently on my to-do list and also focusing on on what I want to do going forward. Um, there's some things on my to-do list that I haven't had the time because they require a large chunk of time and I've never been able to carve out that time in my diary in order to spend time doing that. Um, so I'm focusing a bit more on my diary. I'm starting to decline meetings. I'm starting to block out time in my diary and reclaim that time for me to either do admin um, and catch up with um, my inbox and email on Twitter, on LinkedIn, all of that, making time for that so that I have dedicated time for that. And it's not just ad hoc when I'm making a cup of tea or having my dinner and then focusing on some of those big milestones that I want to to achieve some of those things that have been on my to-do list for a while and I need to actually start ticking them off um I want to get them finished obviously before the end of the FY um because a it's something that I get measured on internally and I want to make sure that I am working towards um that um and also um I just want to be able to start afresh you know at the end of every calendar year, you know, we often talk about New Year's resolutions and how we're starting off the new year, um, fresh slate and stuff like that. So I definitely want to be at that position when Microsoft go into their new FY in July, that I'm at the position where I'm not taking over too many tasks, too many to-do lists, too many projects um, from this FY into that FY. Obviously, there's going to be some because these some projects take a long time but yeah I'm starting to starting to focus down trying to go towards that finish line Um, my colleague Oren will tell me that there's never ever a finish line Um, but I'm definitely starting to focus down on what, what, what my priorities need to be over the next couple of months. One of my personal kind of side projects you may have seen me talk about on Twitter is my blog. I have had a blog since 2015, I think. Um, and over the, the years, I have hosted that blog on various different platforms. I think I very first started on Blogger. I then moved to WordPress, which was hosted on AWS, if you can believe that. Um, I then moved to WordPress, hosted on Azure. And then I moved to, I believe, Grav, hosted on Azure. I think that's the kind of transition that I've had with blogging platforms and my blog over the time. Um, and I'm getting itchy feet. I do enjoy Grav. I do like the fact that it's allowed me to understand things like DevOps because I write my um, blog and all the infrastructure within Visual Studio Code. I then host all of that within a DevOps repo and then the DevOps pushes that build, um, that, that code ultimately um, to my web app and then it gets displayed to the internet and everybody gets to see it. And I've learned how to do that because my blog was the use case, was that production environment that I could um, play with and actually understand the technology. So I've got pipelines, I've got releases. Um, I do have um, a DevOps board with some of the, the to-do things that I need to do in terms of the infrastructure. Um, but it has allowed me to play with all of that and learn how, how those things hang together a bit more in a practical use case. But I'm getting a little tired I'll be honest, of, of the layout of my blog. I think it needs a change. It needs it needs a, a, a fresh 
fresh perspective and I'm starting to focus more on the content and what I'm writing on the blog rather than the infrastructure. Um, I definitely don't want to do that self-hosted mode again and I'm looking towards a more um, you know, a hosted platform, something that I pay for, the infrastructure's all done and really all I'm doing is writing the content and, and posting that. Um, I've been trying out Ghost um, Pro, so the hosted version of Ghost and it's looking very promising. I'm, I've got a 14 day trial and I'm actually starting to actually really like building that trial site up and having a play with it and understanding how it works. And it seems to be um, like the winner, to be honest. Um, it is a bit expensive per month in order to pay for that, that posted platform. But again, I want to take away some of that extra work that I have and not have to look after the underlying platform and worry about that. That's a side project. Um, I've got well over 300 blogs from my archives to port over to whatever platform that I move from. So that's going to be a task. It's going to take several weeks in order to do that, get the, the new blog set up and configured the way that I want and obviously get everything ported across. So again, another project for the next couple of months or maybe not that long, um, but hopefully I'll get to that at some point as well. So thank you for tuning in everybody. I hope you've all had a good week and you have some good plans planned for the weekend. I will catch you in my next video.